Formula One officially began in 1950. The inaugural Formula One World Championship started on the 13th of May at Silverstone. We've been there once, twice, a couple more times since then. The championship was established by none other than the FIA, with six out of the seven tracks being hosted in Europe, and the cherry on the cake was a race in the States. Farina won the first official F1 World Championship, driving for Alfa Romeo. But we'll get to the full history of the first F1 season in another video. And, well, quite obviously, the championship has been hosted annually since then. It's obvious to the ones who haven't been sleeping under a rock for the last 70 years. But no judgement, of course, if you have. Alex the Lion made it look quite comfortable. But as with everything, we always remember our firsts. So let's talk about the tracks in the first ever Formula 1 season. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I see you're not subscribed. Scroll down, click the big red subscribe button, like the video, turn on notifications, press play, and enjoy your day. No, but seriously, there's, there's no harm in doing it. The 1950s Silverstone F1 track was the venue for the first race in the inaugural Formula 1 World Championship. The original layout of the Silverstone circuit used in the 1950 Grand Prix was different to the current configuration. The track was laid out on runways and taxiways of a former World War II Royal Air Force airfield. We can now see where Top Gear got their inspiration from, and I thought their ideas were innovative. The track length was 4.6 kilometers long, which is just over a kilometer shorter than today's race, but around the same length as the Catalonia circuit. The surface of the track was initially composed of a mix of tarmac and concrete, reflecting its origin as an airfield. The race was scheduled for a total distance of 328.61 kilometers, with a race format that included a fixed number of laps, 70 to be exact. Farina, driving for Alfa Romeo, won the 1950 British Grand Prix at Silverstone, making him the first ever race winner. That's a record Verstappen can't even break. Good luck trying. The race attracted a significant crowd, marking the beginning of the popularity of Formula One racing. Fast forward a couple years, and the sport's huge. However, since then, Silverstone has undergone various improvements and modifications, becoming a permanent circuit and hosting numerous prestigious races. Round two, we head to Monaco, where they raced at the Circuit de Monaco, as we always do. You guys really thought they managed to fit another circuit in Monaco. The layout of the Monaco circuit has remained relatively consistent over the years. It's a narrow, winding street circuit that runs through the streets of the Monte Carlo, featuring tight corners, elevation changes, and iconic landmarks. In 1950, the circuit length was approximately 3.8 kilometers long. But as per usual, the track has seen minor altercations since then but it still remains one of the shortest tracks and most challenging circuits on the calendar. I mean, even Latifi was struggling. The track's too difficult. Just call it off already. The surface of the Monaco circuit is made up of regular roads that are part of the city's infrastructure. Unlike purpose-built tracks, the Monaco circuit is unique. That's because it's only a racetrack during the Grand Prix weekend. The Monaco Grand Prix has become one of the most prestigious and iconic races in Formula One. Pan to Ricardo's winning celebration in 2018, I wish I could relive that. The 1950 race added the alloy of the circuit, and Monaco has since become synonymous with glamour and tradition in the world of motorsport. For round three, they packed their bags and headed west. The 1950 Indianapolis 500 was a part of the inaugural season of Formula One. So even if it was just for one weekend, Formula One drivers only knew how to turn left. But it's important to note that the Indianapolis itself was not a Formula One race. The Indianapolis 500 is an iconic American open wheel race that has traditionally been a part of the United States Auto Club, and later the IndyCar series. However, for the 1950 season, it was included in the Formula One calendar, and the points from the race counted towards the F1 World Championship. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway is located in Speedway, Indiana. The oval track at Indianapolis is four kilometers long. It's a rectangular circuit with four distinct turns. The race took place on May the 30th, 1950, and it was scheduled for a total distance of 805 kilometers. It's also worth noting that after the 1950 season, the Indianapolis 500 was no longer included in the Formula One calendar, and the series focused more on European-based races. The Indy 500 continued to be a key event in American motorsport and gained prominence as a part of the IndyCar series. For round four, yet again, they packed their bags and headed back to Europe for the Swiss Grand Prix. It was held at the Bremgarten Circuit, located in the Bremgarten Forest, near the city of Bren, Switzerland. The Bremgarten track was a fast and flowing circuit set in a public park. 
It featured a mix of fast straights and challenging corners, including a sweeping series of turns in the forested area. The length of the Bremgarten circuit for the 1950 Swiss Grand Prix was approximately 7.28 kilometers long, which in today's date would make it illegal, but who cares, it's not on the calendar anymore. The track's surface was a mix of asphalt and concrete. The circuit was laid out on public roads, making it a road course with varying road conditions. The Bremgarten circuit hosted several Swiss Grand Prix events, until safety concerns led to the last race being held in 1954. The Swiss Grand Prix has not been a part of the Formula 1 calendar since. Another familiar track in Formula 1, the 1950s Belgium Grand Prix took place at Spa, a track that really never seems to leave us, and that's good. The circuit Spa is located near a town of Stavelet in the forest of Belgium. The original layout of Spa used in the 1950 race was no longer and different to the modern version. The track was known for its fast and challenging nature with iconic corners like Eau Rouge and Radion. The length of the Spa circuit in the 1950 Belgian Grand Prix was approximately 14.9 kilometers long. This made it one of the longest tracks in Formula 1 history. The circuit's surface was a mix of public roads and private farm roads, combining fast straights with challenging corners and elevation changes. The race took place on June 18th and was scheduled for a total distance of 315 kilometers. Spa has undergone various modifications over the years, with the current layout being shorter than the original. The penultimate race of the 1950 season was held in France, and the French Grand Prix took place at Circuit de Rimes Gour, making it the sixth race of the inaugural F1 season. The circuit was located near the city of Remy's in the Champagne region of France. The circuit had a triangular layout utilizing public roads and featuring long straights and fast corners. The track was known for its high speed nature. It was around 7.8 kilometers long and it was laid out on public roads combining asphalt and concrete for the surface. It took place on July the 2nd and was scheduled for a total race distance of 314 kilometers. The circuit de Remy's Gore hosted various Grand Prix events over the years, with its layout evolving. It remained a popular venue for motorsport until the circuit closed in the 70s. The final race, a track we're all familiar with and Ferrari fans especially love. If you don't support Ferrari at this race, be prepared to get popcorn thrown at you. The 1950 Italian Grand Prix took place at Monza, marking it the final race of the season. The original layout of Monza used in the 1950 race was known as the Combined Circuit. It featured a combination of high-speed banked oval sections and a road course known as the Road Circuit. The track was renowned for its long straights and high-speed corners. The length of the track was approximately 6.3 kilometers long, and the surface was a mix of asphalt and concrete, with banked sections made out of steeply banked concrete surfaces. It took place on September 3rd, and the race was scheduled for a total distance of 423 kilometers. Monza has remained a fixture on the Formula 1 calendar, and it's known for its passionate fans, historic significance, and high-speed nature. The circuit has undergone modifications over the years, but it continues to host the Italian Grand Prix, maintaining its status as one of the most iconic tracks in the whole world. Would you guys want to see any of the tracks make a return to Formula 1 in 2024? Put it down in the comments which one you want to see return, and peace.